Hey guys, look at that. I cleaned up the bench so it might last for a week. At least I can find stuff now. Hey, just wanted to give you a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching the videos. I hit 6,000 subscribers. I would like to reach 10,000 this year. We'll just see how that goes. Another thing is uh, people asked, how can I help out? How can I help your channel? Well, not just me, but any content provider you like is to let their ads play. If you block them or skip them, they don't benefit. And it really helps out if you let the ads play. Another thing is, I guess, YouTube changes how their uh, you know metrics and all that stuff work. And the recent thing is view time. It's important to watch the video as much as you can. I know, you know a lot of people jump in there, watch a little bit, and leave if it's not what they're looking for. But you know it does help out the content creators if you do watch the videos through. You know, I try to make these things interesting, but, you know, I can only do what I can do, so. Just a couple things there. Okay, the subwoofer filter is back here again. I had some good requests. One thing was to show the phase shift on the scope using the second channel. But most importantly, I wanted to show the difference between the filter orders, how it sounds. You know, you have the first order, second order, third order here and why I chose the third order. So what I'll do is I'll hook up the subwoofer in different configurations with the first order, second order, and, and then the third order and see if the camera picks it up, you know, the difference in the sound. Okay, so first we'll take a look at the amplitude and phase shift response of the filters. And, uh, like I said, this is a third order filter, but I can disconnect these two op amps and make them separate. So when I do that, I'll have this first order filter here. So it's really this resistor and this capacitor is doing the filtering. The op amp just acts as a buffer to separate it from the rest of the filter. And that's a good question you might have. Why use active filters? Can't you do it with uh, just the passive devices themselves. The problem with filters, they're very sensitive to the input and output impedance. And the different sections of the filters would react with one another and it would make, you know, selecting the components for the frequency you want to use difficult. So that's one reason. Another reason is the filter has to act, also interact with the outside world for the same reasons. And uh, finally, it, having an active filter allows you to build some pretty amazing and complex types of filters, like a uh, state variable filter, which I'm not getting into here, but it's just an example of using op amps as part of the filter circuit. Okay, enough of that. So I'll start out with this first order filter by disconnecting the op amp and we'll put one channel of the scope on the input, one channel on the output and adjust the frequency. We'll see how the input versus the output will change. I guess I should show the filter here. So I Disconnected the resistor right here, that blue one, and we're looking at the front end of the filter. Okay, starting out at 20 hertz. You can see the waveform is about the same. There is a little bit of difference. The amplification is probably not perfectly one. So let's see what happens here. As I increase, see we're at 35. There is a bit of a phase shift. If I turn it up here, you can see that. And I'm going to have to switch to a higher frequency step because of this function generator. 
can only sweep across frequency steps, uh, limited frequency steps, so, or 68. Now the first order filter is going to have a nice slow roll off. You can see it's rolling off. 82. Okay, around this area is our cutoff frequency. You can see the phase shift. It's not a very large phase shift yet, but as I turn it up, we'll go up to 200. And note the difference of the input versus the output. You know, this is 482 and this is 220. So this is significant. It's still letting quite a bit of signal through. And we'll keep increasing to 500. That's about 500 there. So it is quite diminished, but you know, it's still letting significant signal through. And let's see here, if I can bring that up. Now this is roughly one, two, three, four. Yeah, this is about 90 degrees phase shift, and that's what a first order filter will do. You'll get about a 90 degree phase shift, you know, when you're well into the stop band, as they call it. So let's see how a second order filter works. So I'll set that up and come right back. Okay, we're looking at the second section of the filter, which is a second order. And that's this part of the circuit right here. And this is still disconnected, so I'm feeding the circuit in here. And what I mean disconnected, this, this op amp here is disconnected. So I'm feeding this signal in here and metering at the output. Now this part of the circuit has gain so I have to use a potentiometer to get them roughly similar to start out. And we're starting at about 52 Hertz. Now increase the signal. You see it stays flatter It is decreasing a little bit, but it stays flatter longer. And as we cross, and this is about the crossing point of our filter, crossover point. We'll go up to 200 hertz. You can see, now we have 403 here and 95 so it is better than the first order filter as you can see as I increase up to 500 Hertz you see it really tapers off let me get that adjusted there so let me turn up now well, let's turn this up first and then turn this up. Well, there's a lot of noise because the signal's so low. And you know, as I touch the probe, it's just picking up noise. But you can see here it dropped to 15 millivolts. But notice this. It's 180 degrees out of phase. So in the stop band, it's out of phase. And you might say, well, can that hinder the sound? Well, because the signal is pretty much blocked, it's not really going to be a problem. Okay, now we're looking at the third order filter, the complete subwoofer crossover filter, as we originally set it up. We're at 50 hertz. I should mention don't worry about the differences between you know the filter types as far as the input voltage goes because 
I might have to adjust it a little bit as I was playing around and just be concerned more with the input versus output voltage. So you can see at 52 hertz, we're getting quite a bit of phase shift. A little less than 90. But as I increase, this filter stays pretty flat. But when we hit the crossover point, it drops like a rock. And you can see right around, here's our crossover point. So it, you know, when we go above that, it really drops out quick. So at 200 hertz, you know, it's 51 millivolts versus the 407 millivolt input voltage. And again, I'll go up to 500 hertz. And it's pretty much gone. Now let's turn that up. Put that there. It's going to be really noisy. See if I can clean that up first. Let me, I'll be right back. Okay, I had to turn the channel 2 sensitivity up so high. You are seeing, you know, this low frequency is getting through, causing that. I had to do some things to minimize it, but still it is, you know, you can see that bumping up and down. So I'm trying to hold this thing steady here. But, you know, it's around 4 millivolts. So a couple orders of magnitude lower, so the signal's essentially been filtered out. I think the battery's running down in my function generator because it, when it does, I start getting these notches on the top and bottom. But you can see there, it really lowered the level. Well, I wish I could get rid of that noise, but the phase shift will be 270 now. All right, now we'll hook it up to a music source and a speaker. And the speaker will be connected to the output of this amplifier here. And I'll just use an LM386. How about that? First, we'll start with no filtering at all. We'll see what it sounds like. <laughs> As you can hear, the woofer does block a lot of the high frequencies on its own, but you can still hear a lot of the higher frequency instruments. So now let's try putting the output on the first order filter, 6 dB per octave. That's much better, but still we're getting quite a bit of, of the higher frequency sound through. Now let's see what the 12 dB per octave second order filter will do. That pretty much knocks off the high frequencies, but still a little bit of mid-range gets through. Now I'll do the full 18 dB per octave third order filter. Okay, well, 
that almost took care of it but you know that's plenty that's good enough you know it really diminished even the mid-range sounds so when the subwoofer is playing with the other speakers those very low mid-range sounds are really not going to make any impact so it's a pretty good filter going with the third order crossover for a subwoofer well hopefully the camera audio picked that up good enough to so you can hear the differences and that's it for this thanks for watching i'm just not doing this good today God, I, I just can't even talk